This episode of Because Science is sponsored by Skyscraper in theaters tomorrow. What does the quietest place on earth sound like? As humans with, let's be honest, middle of the road perceptual abilities, we are both fascinated and terrified by creatures with superhuman senses. For example, we know that sharks can ah, taste a drop of blood in a large volume of water, and so it makes us think twice about swimming with open wounds. We know that bears can smell our food from literally kilometers away, and so it makes us think twice about camping when our food is unsecured. But what if there was a creature with hearing so good, it would make us think twice about just speaking? If you wanted to stay safe, how quiet could you possibly In the very good new horror film, A Quiet Place, director and former helper John Krasinski uses aliens to explore this question. In the film, the creatures that have wiped out most of humanity hunt with an ultra-human hearing ability. Even the slightest sound will instantly alert them and get you killed. Because of this, Krasinski and his family go to extreme lengths to make sure their lives are as silent as possible. The quieter they are and the quieter their home is, the safer that they are. By extension, absolute silence is the best way to survive. So what would the quietest place on earth be? And what would that sound like? First of all, how do we hear? And let's be quiet now because there are John Krasinski's roaming about. Your ear is an extremely complicated organ and hearing is a very complicated process, but we can simplify this a bit by straightening out all those twists and turns. Hearing starts with something actually making a sound, in other words, something disturbing the air molecules around it. When it does so, those air molecules will bunch up next to each other and push on air molecules next to those molecules and roll along as a pressure wave. When it gets to your outer ear, that pressure wave will enter your ear canal and then vibrate your eardrum, which in turn vibrates the smallest bones in your entire body, which amplify those vibrations and transmit them into the inner ear, which is filled with fluid and thousands of tiny hairs. The vibration of this fluid and those tiny tiny hairs is eventually translated by your brain into what we consider different amplitudes and frequencies of sound. While humans have a large dynamic range in sound perception, the loudest sounds that we can hear before damage are a trillion times louder than the softest sounds that we can hear. Our hearing isn't particularly special. My favorite example of extreme hearing in the animal kingdom has to be the barn owl. Not only can they fly almost perfectly silent like stealth fighters, they have remarkable ears. And they are adorable little hootie boys and I love them. We humans have ears that are horizontally spaced but not vertically spaced. So when a sound comes in from some source, it reaches our ears along different distances and therefore different times. But our brains can tell time differences along our ears of just 10 millionths of a second. So that allows us to easily localize or locate in space where a sound is coming from horizontally. Hootie boys, like owls on the other wing, have ears that are both horizontally and vertically spaced. In a feather bay's world, verticality is incredibly important, especially when you are flying around and flying around at night. And so owl ears evolved to be asymmetrically placed in their skulls so that they could localize sounds, unlike us, across two dimensions instead of just one. And research into barn owl brains has found that they take this information and overlay it on the visual information inside of their brains so that they might actually be able to see the sounds that they are interested in or something like that. So speaking around a barn owl would be like sending up a flare. Get out of here, John, this is my Scranton. Sorry. So if you were being hunted by a creature with hearing as amazing as an owl's, you would want to get as close as possible to our definition.
The most common unit that you're likely to hear describing loudness or silence is going to be the decibel. The decibel, or one-tenth of a bell, is a way to measure the relative loudness or softness of some sound based on some reference, power, or pressure. And it's all put on a logarithmic scale, just a way to mathematically compress large numbers. Now, based on human testing, we have established the threshold for human hearing, the quietest thing that we can hear, at zero decibels and at 20 micropascals of pressure. The sound of calm, steady breathing is at 10 decibels because of the pressure it produces relative to the reference pressure. The sound of a soft whisper is at 30 decibels, and that's because of the same reference. Usually it's only the loudest sounds that seem to interest us. For example, it is morbidly fascinating that 50% of people's eardrums experiencing 195 decibels of pressure will rupture on the spot. And at 202 decibels, the shock wave from the sound alone would straight up kill you. It'd be like standing directly under a rocket launch if you weren't disintegrated, but the scale goes the other way too, and it's just as interesting. Go below zero, below the threshold for human hearing, and sounds get interesting in a different way. If you could hear it, negative four decibels would be like being able to hear your wristwatch tick from over a meter away. It is literally quieter than qu Barn owls, elephants, and even cats and dogs can hear sounds fainter than the human threshold for hearing, so it's plausible that a highly evolved alien monster that's hunting us might have a lower threshold as well, which would force us to make our lives as quiet as possible. And to show you the epitome of quiet, I'm gonna take you to one of the quietest places on Earth. Seriously. In 2012, the title of quietest place on earth landed right here in Minneapolis, Minnesota at Orfield Labs. Now, since 2012, other quieter places have been verified, but what sets this facility apart is that it is open to the public and therefore open to you and me. What makes this facility so special and so quiet is not that aliens have run around and eaten all of humanity, so it's super quiet. No, what makes this chamber so quiet, one of the quietest places on Earth, is the fact that it is engineered specifically to eat sound. Kind of like a sound hunting monster. Much of that sound eating comes to the design of these panels. Now, you may have seen geometric panels like this in recording studios before, and how they work is surprisingly straightforward. The first way that they deaden sound in this chamber is by absorbing sound waves. So inside of this wire mesh is porous foam-like material. So when a sound wave comes in, some of its energy is spent squishing this material, and it's dissipated as heat inside of the material. So any sound waves that come back out are necessarily quieter. And the second way is these angles here. These deaden echoes. When a sound wave comes in, it expends almost all of its energy not reflecting back out, but bouncing up and down between these panels. When anything reflects back out of these, it's not like it was. It's closer to complete silence. What these dual deadening designs do is eliminate all echoes, or nearly all echoes, from inside of this room. That makes this an anechoic, or non-echoing, chamber. And why that is interesting is that when you are standing inside of this room, and you make a sound like a point source, like I am speaking to you right now, it is as though you are standing in a room with no walls at all. In fact, it's like you're standing in a room that's infinitely large, a mathematical sound void, except with air in it. And I kind of want to give you a sense of what it feels like to be inside a place like this. So right now the chamber door is open. I'm going to start clapping and then it's going to slowly close and I think you'll be able to hear the difference, all right? So here's some normal clapping. 
and hear how it changes. It's almost gone, almost completely silent. Another thing you can show is I'm gonna make a sound towards you, but then turn towards some of the anechoic foam, and I think you can hear the difference, right? Now it sounds exactly the same to me, but because no reflection should be making their way to you, it should sound different and a little eerie. And finally, the ambient noise in this room at its quietest gets quieter than the threshold for human hearing. So let's just take that in for a second. Ah, I can feel my te I can hear my teeth scraping against each other. Ah, I'm a bag of noise. So what is it like to be in one of the quietest places on earth? What does it sound like? Well, it's, it's hard to describe because it sounds like nothing. Our brains associate a number of noises to everyday life and everyday experience. And being in here with all of those noises canceled out, it feels like some layer of my experience has been removed but replaced with nothing. I'm painfully aware almost of my shirt ruffling and my heart beating and my skeleton scraping together. It's very unsettling. But everyone that I told I was coming to this chamber, they all said, oh, it's going to drive you crazy. I don't think it's going to drive you crazy. I've been in here for a few minutes now, and while it is unsettling, I don't think it's going to make you go insane. People work and research here every day. But it has made me appreciate how much I enjoy sound in my life, even though silence is golden. So I should get out of here, and I need to put some numbers to this chamber, so it's back to my own void. Wow, it is nice to be loud and totally annoying and in different clothes for some reason. John Krasinski is always listening. Thinking back to our decibel scale again, when it held the record, the anechoic chamber in Minnesota that we just visited registered negative 13 decibels. But as I said, since then, another chamber has gotten even quieter. In 2015, the quietest place on Earth officially was an anechoic chamber owned by Microsoft, which got down to negative 20 decibels. This is hard to conceptualize, but this, if you could hear it, is only slightly louder than what it would sound like if you and I were having this conversation at this volume, but we were over 30 kilometers apart. If you could hear me then, you could probably also hear air molecules colliding. If you were forced to live a life of silence, then making your home into an effective anechoic chamber might be a good way to stay alive. Because the best anechoic chambers eat 100% of echoes that occur inside of them, any creatures or monsters listening for your activity outside of your anechoic home would only be able to hear direct sounds. Any sounds that had to travel around corners or bounce off walls wouldn't theoretically make it out of the house, and then therefore you would be theoretically... Theor So, how quiet is quiet? What do the quietest places on Earth really sound like? Well, thanks to anechoic engineering, they are quieter than what quiet means to us. Quieter than complete silence. If you were standing in one of these chambers like I was, the ambient sound wouldn't wiggle your eardrums the width of a single air molecule. If aliens, like those from The Quiet Place, were hunting you like barn owls, but had lower hearing thresholds like dogs, cats, and elephants, then they would force us to make our lives as quiet as possible, and therefore making your home or hiding spot into an anechoic chamber might in fact save your life. It gives a whole new meaning to the term dead silent. Because science. You know, we actually were kind of being loud this whole time, so maybe we should...
Talking about negative decibels is difficult because it's below the human threshold, so it doesn't even really make sense to say how loud it is, but some animals can hear below our threshold. And one really weird reference I found was negative 80 decibels. And what that would sound like if you could hear it is what a shrimp chewing on food at the bottom of the ocean would sound like from 100 meters away. but like a hundred times quieter. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, BJ, and thank you again to Paramount for inviting me to check out the quietest place on Earth. It was cool, and so quiet that I could hear my brain moving around inside of my skull. If you want to check out A Quiet Place, and I highly suggest that you should, it is a very cool sci-fi horror film. It is out now on 4K Ultra, Blu-ray, and DVD, and digital. So go pick it up. If you like this video, no matter where you are, consider liking and subscribing, and if you're on YouTube, hit that notification vacation bell fam because we get up to a lot of nerdy stuff on this channel. If you want more of me, you can check out Natural Selection, a nerdy debate show, but you can only get that on Alpha at projectalpha.com where if you sign up now for a free trial, you can get Because Science, the main show, two days earlier than everyone else. Oh, and follow me here, then bye. Thank you again to Skyscraper for sponsoring this episode of Because Science. See Skyscraper in theaters and real 3D tomorrow, July 13th. When the tallest and safest skyscrapers under attack, head of security Will Sawyer, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, must defy all odds to stop terrorists and save his family. The Rock stars in this incredible action-packed thriller that has so many death-defying moments it will have you at the edge of your seat. Check out Skyscraper in theaters tomorrow. <laughs>